morning, everybody. <coughs> we'll get started. And we're starting with what uh, we and tries consider a very important member of our advisory council, a real activist with a lot of on the, on the ground experience. So uh, you will particularly appreciate that there is a hardness in what Emmett and has to say today, and it's a hardness of practical experience of actually doing things on the ground. And so we're particularly happy that she accepted uh, to become one of our keynote speakers, and I would like to warmly welcome her participation uh, here this morning. Just talk with the microphone. Okay. Okay. Hello. I need to learn more language from Anatolia, actually. <laughs> My ethnic language is very short. Today I'm going to talk about the growth in social ecology context. Um, as Dimit said, uh, I'm on the ground, really. I, I like the ideas, but at the same time, I like putting the ideas on the ground as soon as possible because we don't have much time. Um, so I will go through, I will show some slides at the background. Uh, it's related to my speeches to uh, imagine what I'm talking about. Most slides are um, from my practicums, my students' involvement to seed uh, liberation, seed conservation, and community gardening Based in Istanbul. And in New Zealand, I have set up a project with uh, <coughs> refugees and new migrants with women's leadership. So you, uh, the slides will uh, pointing out the dates um, and where it's from, what country, mostly from Turkey, Istanbul. Mm -hmm. but there is one from Ankara. So the slides will be running at the background. At the end of the presentation, if I have time, I can explain little stories related to the slides. Okay, um, let's start. Social ecology teaches us ecological crisis is deeply uh, rooted in social and economic dimensions. Although exhaust, exhaustion of natural resources is the main concern to limit the growth, this course comes from questioning our happiness. This closely linked to what the meaning of quality of life. That's why the solution is in the question, how can we create a local, self-sufficient and resilient life that includes in actions to form social and ecological systems? In the current era, we also need to be aware of capitalism is reforming itself, greening itself, by supplying green products on market as a solution to global climate change. In this presentation, Firstly, I will analyze why we need the growth. Then, how technological developments can provide freedom and quality of life while criticizing some green development terms. Finally, through the end, I will touch to the commons as a steady state economy alternative to different parts of the world. During the flow of my presentation uh, as an eco-feminist, I will also underline gender identity as well as other components. First, uh, the growth economy. Anthropocentric, uh, in other words, human-centric growth economy sees nature with your animal and plant kingdoms as property. Then the word resource, you can think of the meaning of resource, it, it already reflects a materialistic meaning instead of a natural value. Whereas for indigenous communities, 
for example, rivers, mountains, minerals as part of their everyday life. They value them in, in their practices. For instance, they show gratitude to those living features as well as humans' effort to bring food to, to the table. We forgot this, this sort of connections long time ago. Now, in this materialistic world, we are living based on possessions and competitions. Thomas Malthus was the first political economist who proposed a systematic theory of population. Malthus articulated in his famous text an essay on the principle of population in 1798. Quote, population, when unchecked, increases in, in geometrical ratio, substances increases only in an arithmetical ratio. The principle offered by Malthus describes how to match demand and supply on the market. Today's neoliberal market economy offers us consumer credits, buy now, pay later, and variety of incentive packages, including pornography packages for men's business trips for some women too. Um, I know this one from my feminist studies. <laughs> I have seen many documentaries. So even humans' bodies as seen consumption materials through these violent practices. Human-centric patriarchal capitalist system is not only destructive to itself, it also alienates humans from each other. In recent years, alternative medical scientists are underlining how social isolation is causing many diseases. In this context, I would, <clears throat> it would be good to point out the Kulub, Kulub of Rome's influential, influential text as well, The Limits to Growth, that was published in uh, 1972. The book underlines nature's declining resources such as arable land, fresh water, mine, and, and so on. The book also focuses on overpopulation. According to the growth <coughs> economist, uh, the world cannot uh, carry this much population, especially Asian, African, and so-called developing countries. Uh, flow from developing countries to the countries is a big issue as well. Uh, limiting population sounds good to our ears at first instance, but when we look at the real discourse behind it, it's already on a slippery ground, ground the world itself. The population discourse is also anti-humanistic. Of looking at how resources are distributed and whether everyone has the same opportunity to access to the resources, why sexist, even racist population concerns are focusing on overpopulation. Most population control applied in the global south on childbearing humans' bodies. There is also another term, uh, carrying capacity to limit to the population in the regions, especially in developing, developed countries. According to the population biologist, the carrying capacity is defined as the maximum maximal law that expresses equilibrium density. Joel Cohen, the professor of Earth uh, and Environmental Science at Columbia University, <clears throat> puts like this, carrying capacity is determined jointly by human choices and natural constraints. Consequently, the question how many people can the Earth support does not have a single numerical answer, now or ever. From the other hand, what's the criteria to measure the carrying capacity? It's, if it's based on land use, for example, in the US, people are occupying five times more. In Canada, four times more. Some other sustainability terms, such as natural capital, carbon tax, polluter space uh, are also very opportunistic, uh, carries opportunistic meaning, which serves to green capitalism. If we consider nature as a capital, 
does not matter how many renewable energy units have been replaced, for example, by the fossil fuel companies, Chevron. Putting a price on nature for carbon tax is also very false meaning. For example, pine trees are toxic to Australia's natural environment, but when mining companies cease their activities, they prefer to cover with pine trees because they grow fast and they are cheap to buy the seedlings. They put money in their pockets and leave the area so-called complying in environment, their environmental responsibility. Respected environmentally responsible companies. After, but it, it takes so many years to clean up the pine trees. It requires spending a lot of money uh, by the conservation groups or the institutions. The growth economy also creates scarcity. The hierarchy is and polarization in the context of post scarcity. Quote, provided the historic rationale for the development of patriarchal family, private property, class domination, and the state. It nourished the great divisions in hierarchical society that pitted town against country, mind against senselessness, work against play in the against society, and finally the in individual against himself. I'm adding herself and themselves from gender person. Dislocation of local people is another significant topic of green developments. For example, there are more than 2,000 small dam, hydroelectric dam projects in across Turkey. They promoted them as clean and green local energy resources including waters of small creeks start, <laughs> started to be captured into the pipes and diverted to the dams from tens of tens kilometer away. This means the entire ecosystem is affected in that region. Another big dislocation is happening. I'm happy Arjan is here because he has campaigned for um, Hassan Kesham long years. Uh, I have been in the area, I have visited a couple of villages. Uh, they have been displaced. Uh, how many uh, villages, Arjan, uh, in the town? The dam will be flooded away, 199 Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, since uh, 2012, uh, a historical world, uh, world heritage class historical area is covered under water through the Ulusu Dam project. In, this is in Kurdish speaking region of Turkey. In short, <laughs> green capitalism is inventing its own wheels, but not creating a hope for even for upper upper middle class. Romanian American economist Nicholas uh, George Rogan interprets the law of entropy from a bioeconomic perspective. He developed his own fourth law of thermodynamics, which is explained as nature in a closed system. The material entropy must ultimately reach a maximum, which implies complete recycling is impossible. It's true that nature starts to create her own cycle. When it reaches a certain point, and then it explodes as floods, wildfires, and other so-called natural disasters. Uh, there is only hope comes from people's moment. Uh, for example, climate justice moment in, in the US, Young people recently in Oregon and Washington have started to sue the U.S. government for <clears throat> clean air, fresh water, and soil clean soil act for their future. This is something really meaningful because the action is also inclusive in terms of race, gender, ethnicity, 
to demand and cry for uh, our future. Second topic, a subtopic in my presentation, what sort of technology creates our quality of life? Technology helps to minimize uh, our work, uh, reduce labor, offer free time to develop creativity. If it's decentralized, human scale and controlled in responsible hands. Greek mythology resonates the meaning of techne, which is fine art. Athena, the goddess of the <coughs> peace, of peace, says, a techne can destroy our agricultural order because ma man is unjust. Power and techne depend on each other and techne cannot be controlled. Technology can be controlled, but when we look at the nuclear technology or military technologies and their impact on the earth, on the, all living beings, it's it almost uncontrollable. According to the Institute for Economics and Peace, uh, during the first Gulf War, the U.S. Bomb, bombed Iraq with 340 tons of mis missiles containing deplete, depleted uranium. In human and other living bodies are all <coughs> in danger now. More cancer cases are. Greenwash is another glomo Greenwash is carrying a glamorous concept in technological developments, not only packaging, but also some well-known corporate companies are setting up repair stations in recent years. In Europe, this is happening now. This looks like Starbucks has to sell 10% of fair trade coffee, even from Zapatista coffee they may be selling. Some food, uh, fast food chains are offering organic food. All these <coughs> greenwash efforts to keep the green consumer demand on their own hands. Whereas we know that ethnic tests, tests and engaging conversation, for instance, at the Shuri shop or neighborhood tailor's shop uh, is disappearing very fast. Also, the automatization is an arguable topic. For instance, we, we need some robotic tests in a small scale, such as weeding robots or coconut picking robots from the tall trees because many people die. Uh, 600 people die picking robots from the tall trees in Asia every year. Maybe we need robots for them. But every technology should be considered to restore nature and human relationships. Perhaps ocean water, for example, can be dis desalinated because we are sh short of uh, uh, fresh water now. But how futures robotic technologies can express the deepest healing pleasure of the soil? In the social, ecological, local, revolutionary context, community should take into consideration what sort of technologies will impact to their lives, uh, what scale, um, and all the uh, accepting decentralized human scale technologies. A democratic technology, firstly, should be participatory. Secondly, appropriate to the local culture. Thirdly, it should be simple to be repaired by everyone in the community. Knowledge should be based on open source for continuous improvement for communities, health and well-being. Technologies can also be multifunctional to create simplicity and wise material usage, time-consuming and energy efficient. Third subtopic now, locality and bioregionalism. Localization means using local resources with ecological rationality. A community life can be built which relies on local resources. The purpose is not only to reduce ecological footprint, but also to strengthen local community ties. This creates resiliency and overall for a quality life and well-being 
indigenous people live in such a way that makes them strong to deal with any sorts of catastrophes. Bioregionalism bio is emerged in early uh, 70s as the product of intermingling between bio geographies in the Californian counterculture. Peter Berg, the bioregionalism educator, underlines this uh, quote. In a bioregion, human activity should be based on ecological and geographical boundaries rather than economic boundaries. Bioregionalism is also closely linked to local resource usages. Some examples can be taught like this. For example, in a bioregion, uh, a bioregion can be defined by a watershed, uh, which is created by nature herself within a unique climate. As a result of this, the local characteristics may change from region to region. People farm differently, build their houses um, differently, so that a culture, a unique culture is created. There are many similarities, for example, in local people's culture in between, let's say, Syrian town of Kobane and Turkish town of Suraj. It's beyond the national borders. People are connected deeply culturally. Uh, how do they feed themselves, how to cook and how to dress? For another example, we closely observe uh, western part of Turkey and Greece is facing to that <coughs> direction. Culture, dance, music, taste, yeah. many things are similar. How national borders can divide these people. Historian, historian and city planner uh, Lewis Mumford emphasized a city as a community where everyone is responsible for their everyday activity and action. This means active citizenship, as Bookchin often underlines in, in an urban settings. He states in one of his oldest book, Limits, Limits of the City, that, that book is available here, luckily. I really recommend you to buy one. For a uh, quote, for all its co collectivism, a strong bond of solidarity, Tribal society was surprisingly patriarchal, based on kinship, however, fictitious its reality. The tribe rooted its affiliations in lineage ties, or what I call the blood oath. This, this term, blood oath, uh, means to me a lot. The term blood oath des describes anything caused by parochialism in art. Nowadays, people uh, call it creating a tribe instead of community. Instead of a community, they call it, we are creating a tribe. This contains possible danger, maybe they are not aware of yet. Uh, seeing outsiders to a a as a threat to the community. Whereas, it's possible to observe and learn from ecological plant communities to bring to the human communities. It's <clears throat> uh, uh, the term is uh, called ecotones, uh, represent two different zones characteristics. Uh, so it can apply to human communities. Such a way we can create more fertile, fertile zones to give birth to many diversity, socially and economically and even culturally. Now let, let us um, talk about the commons as an alternative to the growth. Commons emerge as, spa as spaces of social re reproduction access equally by all in the community without any intervention of the state or the market. Production takes place under collective labor, equal access to the mean of reproduction with the consideration of equality. Commons are the activities occur 
collectively by taking responsibility in terms. It means inclusiveness, belonging, share the outcome equally, bad or bad, to repair or uh, share the excessive in the community. Commons may fail. May, there is a danger commons always can fail. The ownership, if, if the ownership is getting in private hands. It's called the, the tragedy of the commons by Garrett Harden, who was <coughs> in our attention from 18th century England. A quote from uh, Harden. From the observation of common pastures allowed to the individuals to benefit from overstocking at the community's expense. Therefore, commons are inherently prone to ecological exhaustion and ultimately ruin. If, if commons could not manage well, yes, it, it may end up tragically. I observed this uh, from my own village in the Asian region of Turkey at my early <coughs> young years. A group of common land was allocated to grazing village animals. The herd was made of uh, collection uh, from each household. One person was taking care of the herds every day, so labor is shared equally. The problem is started when people have decided to keep their animals in their own individual pastures. Common land was uh, only to get extra benefit for them. So it brought it to exhaustion point. And after three years, commonality in many things, we used to have common houses, village houses to share many things, culturally and food celebration. It, they are all disappeared one by one very quickly. In, in, after 1980s, no common land has <laughs> been in the village anymore. All private sites, I'm all. Good news is that there is a spot that, that more people, more and more people are creating commons all over the world now. We are facing, because we are facing more economic crisis as well as ecological. For instance, seed libraries, seed exchange festivals, uh, there is one big uh, across Europe, uh, in uh, Greece, I know. Um, the, uh, in Turkey, there are big seed exchange festivals uh, in many regions. Uh, in this way, only people can find um, heritage seeds to plant in their backyards or front yards or in their small farms. Uh, the seed selling is forbidden in Turkey now. Community gardens, time banks, saving pools, such as in New Zealand. I have been in New Zealand after so many years, after 10 years, uh, three years ago. Saving pools are spread all over country. People are not relying on the banks, just they are creating their own saving pools. <coughs> Maybe you have heard that how they have coped after Christchurch uh, earthquake, that the earthquake, through the time banks and saving pools, uh, they have <clears throat> managed their everyday life uh, to cope the catastrophe. Traditional societies can create local solutions by tracing back <clears throat> their cultural ecological practices. For example, there is one successful example in Raj Rajasthan in India. They recharged groundwater and restored large areas of irrigation and they have established small dams by women's leadership, including the engineering part in 1989. Even <coughs> old irrigation systems called Johats have restored. Now uh, the, the uh, region of Rajasthan, Raj Rajasthan, they call, uh, is offering excessive help to other regions uh, economically, 
ecologic land. Uh, they have set up some co-ops to, uh, to sell their, um, for example, aloe vera. They produce many different things from aloe vera. So abundance is created. In, in the past, there were many violence, including domestic violence, violence in the community, and the resources get scarce. Uh, violence is increased. There is another successful example in Rajiva now. Um, women are creating first eco-village in Rojava by laying bricks themselves, engineering the eco-village project themselves. Uh, it's called Jinwar. They have a website. I, I, I suggest you to follow the names. It's uh, <clears throat> exciting to hear this project. Now I'm approaching the end. Um, what sort of growth we are into? Yeah, so, uh, we have talked about natural di dialect uh, 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 <coughs> this presentation, a couple of friends have brought uh, book Murai Bookchin's based on <coughs> natural dialect. So in nature everything flows, nothing stops. So we are into growth now, but what sort of growth we are into? In nature, every living system is born, grow, reach to a certain point and die. It means decompose and it goes into cycle. So nature cycles everything. <clears throat> How human uh, society should observe and learn from nature and bring to social communities. Social ecology provides us a framework observing from the virtue of nature. Bookchin calls it first nature. Um, human communities are uh, defined as second nature. Uh, Brian uh, has explained this concept very well yesterday. We humans, human Communities also a part of natural ecosystem and create social ecosystem based on relationships, corporate cooperation, and mutual support. A degrowth, or some people call it steady state economy, requires self sufficiency and wise rational resource management, a regenerative uh, way of uh, implementing the projects, reharmonizing re our relationship with nature and with other people. Not only self-sufficiency is considered in planning, but also local and bioregional level of redu reducing ecological footprint creates qu quality of li life. In this globalized world, since supply and demand flow, are based on neoliberal politics, a degrowth model cannot be at a national level, like Bhutan's national happiness economy, maybe you have heard. You may protect your uh, region or your country from some sort of ex ex explosions, <laughs> such as genetically modified seeds and a build of soil, but Hierarchical societies, we know from social ecology, uh, never creates any e e e egalitarian way. Uh, Bhutan is ruled by a king, or an, it can be a queen as well. In, in a social ecological concept, a city does not produce best uh, because the logic comes from the design. Production and consumption should be in a regenerative, harmonizing way. Also, every element in an ecological system should be considered to serve to multiple functions. Since energy will be circulated in a closed system, one system's output can be input to the following systems. Um, like chickens get protein from the compost piles and produce eggs, feathers, meat, and so on. Organic life forms all will form uh, in this way, and it, 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 it 
can bring publicity and reharmonization in our lives. A democratic and participatory technological development plays a vital role in a social ecological rea realization for a liberated society. Bookchin underlines appropriate human scale technologies which help to create living communities to interact between each other. Quote from Bookchin, organic societies are not yet divided into the classes and bureaucracies based on exploitation that we practical society. Social ecology perceives potentiality of freedom and self-actualization in the context of dialectical naturalism and rationality. We need to take into consideration that human species are a part of complex life forms similar to the ecosystems. Social and ecological diversity keeps us strong. A decentralized city <coughs> requires municipal level of non-hierarchical settings. Anthropologist, anarchist scholar David Graeber, I know Brian doesn't like him, mentions politics of happiness, politics of happiness, instead of national happiness. This can be applied to the growth uh, for self-determination and active citizenship. When people have started to enjoy uh, being active in the politics, creating alternative to themselves, um, it's, uh, it's endless pleasure. For example, this is happening in war zone in Syria, Rajawa now. By downscaling our production and consumption at local level, ecological and social entrants of the <coughs> valleys start to enhance towards equality and justice on the planet. Resources can be distributed through new forms of democratic institutions. <coughs> Such societies will no longer have to grow or die. Capitalism dictates us grow or die. Material accumulation will no longer hold a prime position since commons can play vital roles for the most, most of our needs. Communal level of technological development, communitarian level of uh, technological development, and applications and Im Im implications will enable us to live in a communal and frugal society. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I oh. speak at time. Actually, if I have time, can I go through the slides? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Can we start? I'm I'm into I mean I'm in, I'm an ecological designer uh, as my profession. I give many lectures and workshops. Uh, I'm especially focusing on food sovereignty. Uh, this is the picture from uh, old Istanbul uh, in 1950s. As you may have heard, uh, uh, historical ancient Istanbul is surrounded by the Bostans, what we call Bostans, it means community gardens or small farms. So this is the ancient Istanbul, it's surrounded by, by edible landscape, organic in, in that time, organic edible landscape. How a city can be designed, connected with the rural, uh, it's, uh, this concept is in, um, in um, for example, uh, some city designers, I couldn't remember now, uh, how they bring countryside connected with um, uh, the city. Uh, so this is from uh, Yedikule Bostans. Uh, it was in danger. I actually, most parts of Yedikule Bostans have been disappeared. There is only one uh, space left. Uh, th there were a strong opposition to, to uh, conserve that space because many 
ethnic people uh, live uh, get their everyday <coughs> living expenses selling <coughs> lettuce, for example. One unique species of lettuce, it's called Yalu Marul, is only produced in this region. So very unique test is, uh, <coughs> um, st yeah, uh, around the Istanbul, ancient Istanbul was uh, provided maybe 60 or 70 percent of cities uh, food uh, especially vegetables uh, were supplied by the Bostons in the uh, 50s okay next one this is uh, Gezi as uh, you have heard many times uh, women's leadership was really uh, obvious in Gezi that's why I bring I choose and especially women in, in the slides because women have set up uh, many location I mean uh, educational sites how a child caring can be shared in the community how they can focus on their mental uh, creation instead of uh, shadow work the, these women are exposed violence and, and equal to the men in the and uh, yeah, makes sense. Gezi Park Farms, I have uh, offered uh, a workshop during the Gezi Park Farms. After Gezi moment uh, disappeared to the parks, uh, so uh, park forms are created by the neighbors uh, uh, in a neighborhood level. Uh, Sema and Ertu has actively participated to the, that forms still there trying to conserve a <clears throat> park in Ajibadem, Istanbul. That's the reflection of Gezi Park forms. Yeah. This is Kuzguncu Bostanı in Anatolian part of Istanbul. My students, some of my students have paid a lot of attention to this uh, create, to create and Preserve. Vilan, can you talk a little about this one? You have been involved into this one as well. Who's well going, who's going, it's, it was under threat, and uh, they have um, gained the court cases. It's ruined again and again. Oh, always. Uh, yeah, I know much about the Roman uh, garden. Okay. So, we are coming to that. Okay. Anyway, the, we have some Boston. These are the ancient location of Boston in Istanbul just left very little representative level we are trying Actually, to I can keep add it about yeah some please yeah. Boston. So, because when you post them, mm -hmm. uh, now it's controlled by local AKP municipals mm -hmm. and it transformed into a, um, um, you know hobby place for uh, the new uh, class created by mm -hmm. AKP and you pay for your uh, square mm -hmm an area mm -hmm. you you do your Individual. own garden yeah and uh, uh, and lots of uh, boston's or inner city gardens or whatever it's called mm -hmm. maybe guerrilla garden projects all of demolished mm -hmm. except i think roma boston yeah uh, it's coming to them yeah okay this is another that people this is so it's going so many years now almost 10 years Local people gained the court cases and it's ruined. If they started to protect again, and yeah, this is from Kuzgunjuk again in 2014. Next one. Uh, this is from uh, my Ankara workshop and, um, through a <coughs> local civil organization. It's called Chidam Mimbostana. This is close to Middle Eastern Technical University this space we have created we have I have offered uh, workshops there for three years uh, we call it ecological practicum days <coughs> and sort of festival we have built a cup, cup oven pizza oven and made uh, seed balls and uh, many school kids came along and uh, this uh, event went for three years um, but now, uh, happily to see the reflection in the uh, uh, neighborhoods, they are creating more Boston's gardens, community gardens, after 
our activity. Yeah. Yeah, Istanbul. Uh, this is Kuzey Ormanları after the actually during the third Bosphorus Bridge. Um, you may have heard Kuzey Ormanları group has been set to protect the forest because only that part is left a forest uh, and I mean endemic species as well. This uh, this group is still uh, having park forms. I have heard. When I go back to Turkey, they have invited me to participate to the platforms. I will go to participate. Okay. Uh, this is my own project. And of course, it's a collective project, not only my effort, but I am the child, yeah, brainchild of the project. After the September 11 attack, I was in uh, Sydney. I have observed, and um, um, many Middle Eastern communities were suffering with prejudices. Even my own house sort of attacked uh, when we put a um, peace poster in front of the uh, <clears throat> door. One of neighbor came and tear it into poster, no more in Iraq poster, and swear towards our house. It was shocking because I pay attention to my neighbors all the time and go back to your fucking countries. Uh, that moment was really thanks but what sort of community ties we should create to know each other's deeply in difficult times my next door neighbor was from german origin he, he she was a peace activist 80 years old peace activist john howard government the conservative government we have had in australia long years more than 10 years i guess he has sent a package to every household if any suspicious activity is seen you can call this number this number this this big package to, uh, has been sent to every household with our tax money uh, when, I, when i saw that numbers on his uh, fridge he asked to ursula do you believe in this what do you what, what do you mean if if i make barbecue with my turkish kurdish community you, you see it as a suspicious activity you, you can call police yes i may i may do that of course we need to protect ourselves she said wow <laughs> my my dear neighbor peace activist neighbor started to see us suspicious from that time anyway yeah just innermost gardens project has been created with that soul and spirit uh, i went uh, to uh, i i moved to new zealand which is much empathic of course that political climate affected to new zealand and canada as well which are known sympathetic to refugees and migrants but uh yeah this project has took me three years uh, to create a, an edible landscape as well as working with uh, maori people because indigenous concept was in the core of our project respect to learn from them and uh, we, we have <coughs> uh, demand a piece of land from the municipality also educational health space this was perfect in the middle of the city but later on uh, the municipality said to us you can go one one hour outside of the city uh, the land is ready for you but the, this land was in the middle of the city they said no this land is not suitable to you because migrant women carry their kids with long dresses or head scars whatever local also local groups have started to oppose our proposal to get this uh, location anyway it took three years to uh, convince them uh, because we were working with scientists from the universities and maori people you need to convince local groups who are opposing to your project as well not only showing your capacity to the municipality anyway after three years finally we have rented this space uh, created edible landscape food forest and 
uh, this house is our educational house and one of the respected projects still in New Zealand art area. But ethnic diversity is disappeared after I have left New Zealand. Um, but still the project is under, uh, on, on the ground. Yeah. Roma Bostana now belongs in Mosin to this project. Uh, it's, it, it's the reflection after Gezi, right? I, I, yes, it's I, just uh, we've uh, there was another uh, post uh, before Gezi, but this is it didn't last so long. So after Gezi, uh, a group of people, especially from that area, decided to rebuild the Costa, mm -hmm. uh, and now it's the uh, only Costa which remain after Gezi. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, it, it's a very valuable area, mm -hmm. and the land is very valuable, mm -hmm. and it belongs... Facing to Bosphorus, it's a yeah, very yeah, nice location. You see the Bosphorus and very the Marmara Sea from both sides, mm -hmm. and uh, so you can see the moon, etc. And uh, in the standard media, there was a sometimes uh, some news. Mm -hmm. It's written that it's the most expensive tomato uh, in the world, uh, <laughs> from the Roma Boston. Uh -huh. So the municipal government is trying to get uh, to take it back. Now it belongs to the municipal government, and they are planning to build four uh, coffee shops around <laughs> that area. They built one. Uh, there was a, a parking area, mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't green. So they built one. It's a very huge uh, and unnecessary because the area is full of coffee shops and the bars. You know, yeah. there's no need yeah. uh, for the uh, yeah. for that. But you you guys get, um, yeah in the court cases recently. There was a yeah, celebration. Yeah, there was like a celebration. But I don't know how long it will. Uh, Can uh, you go on to the next one? Yeah, this yeah, man is Kazandik. They have sued the local government. Uh, not only uh, not the Roma Boston, yeah. but the whole that district. Uh, mm -hmm. Peolo is, uh, you know, Gezi Park, uh, Istiklal Street belong to Peolo. Yeah. So uh, the whole uh, <laughs> project uh, now uh, is, uh, is seized, is seized mm -hmm. uh, and they have to develop the uh, Peolo municipal government had, had to develop a new project. Uh, you know, and it will take time, so that's why we made a celebration. Okay. Not only for Roma Boston, yeah. because there are many historical buildings, etc., yeah, in that district yeah. street. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a Next way one. of feeling for actual circumstances. Yeah, anyway, you can ask yeah. to Bilan, he, he knows more. Uh, I have been at the site a couple of times. Uh, uh, Bodrum, this is from the Mediterranean uh, coast, Bodrum, one of the touristical place. Uh, one of my students has took a leadership, a woman, uh, to organize the big seed festival. And they have cr created an institution, a civil institution. Uh, it's called Bodrum Tohum Derneği. And then local farmers market, ethical <coughs> market has been created in the region. And next one. And ah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> we can take five or seven minutes for questions. Yeah, I'm here all day. You can uh, approach to me. May I ask uh, yeah. chemicals in there? Um, uh, the core of the growth or the go the core of agricultural uh, transformation can be the growth according to your experience oh uh, no i'm not into agriculture i'm more into perennial edible landscaping because agriculture is leaving the ecosystem at the first stage all the time mm -hmm. uh, this disturbance we call it in ecological practicums agriculture means lots of work slavery and uh, and it doesn't produce a lot of nutrition you know, level uh, because you are plowing or destroying the topsoil each year um, so um, 
the growth concept uh, should contain a perennial edible landscaping, uh, going back to horticultural practices, and eventually <laughs> hunter-gatherer society. I don't know. I'm not primitivist, but I'm into yeah per edible um, perennial landscaping. Okay. No questions. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Mm -hmm. I uh, it's quite inspiring also because I've been uh, in the UK. There is a growing mm -hmm. movement, uh, mm -hmm. especially towards um, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, sustainable uh, let's say, uh, gardens with perennials mm -hmm. and zoning and so on. And it's quite important also for building the community. Mm -hmm. So I have two questions that are somehow related to the project that that you are that you are leading in Australia. Oh, uh, New Zealand. New Zealand, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so the first question is uh, if you can build a bit more about which were the concern of the citizen against the mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. and how you won them. Mm -hmm. And then the second is. Uh, you mentioned something that now that you have left uh, the project, uh, I'm not a bit. living there physically, but I'm supporting. Life. Yeah, you're supporting. So I would like to know if you are putting in practice some, uh, yeah, some what can I say? Some practices, some rules mm -hmm. in order to experience the project to uh, be ongoing outside. when. The leader, the, mm -hmm. what the person yeah, I understand what is, you mean. Yeah, is not there anymore. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you mean. I will start from the second one. Uh, when you are playing a lot of roles in a project, for example, when I was leaving New Zealand, I was this uh, really anxious how to. Uh, leave this project alive. I, I have started to organizing what was my role, my sub roles, my other roles. And I have divided my position into 10 different people <laughs> and created guidelines. I used to do fundraising, apply grants, and uh, going to the local <coughs> um, ethnic people's organizations, meetings, uh, giving talks, presentations. I have divided into 10 different positions, volunteer positions, of course. Actually, we have got grants and get, uh, paid positions as well in, in the project, but mostly volunteer based. Um, when I was <clears throat> the per main person, so called main person, I, I was always into horizontal structure. Even after two years, I was there. I was step back. I, it was not in my plan to move to America, Seattle at that time. I did step back two years before, <coughs> but it was falling apart uh, and I just started to put a lot of attention again. But that uh, uh, stepping back ma made um, some <laughs> awareness in the group. If, if I'm not putting a lot of effort, what will happen in the project? Um, yeah, that starting to that period long time ago, or even you are physically there, it's always good to be in the in the background sometimes. And um, next person, for example, the site was given to us, rented by us, as the project is promoted with women's leadership. Men was involved into the project, but they were not at decision-making level. That, that constitution we have submitted to Wellington Law Council, it was like this, men will, the project will be open to men, but they will not be at the decision-making level. Uh, when I have left, uh, because I have strong feminist values, uh, I have studied in this area, area, next person, next coordinator couldn't carry this spirit, I mean, this knowledge and practical uh, enough. Cities started to put pressure. This is the um, 
division because men's are not decision at decision ma making level. The, so a membership should be open to men as well. They, and they couldn't resist and they, it's open to men uh, membership. Even some sexist men became very, very active in the group. But we, we were so impatient. I was supporting other women long distance. Mm, I'm now that sexist man became my good friend. <coughs> it's educational period very softly. Uh, he is even paying attention to ethnic names. My, when I share uh, names from Turkey, difficult time, he pays attention. He, he has educated himself. We have helped him to educate himself. Yeah. Other questions? Uh, one more, sorry. Uh, what was the question? No, we have one? still three minutes before the break. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, late. This, huh? Just remind what, quickly. Was about the pressure that you had from the citizens that either want and how yes, want yes, them. some uh, local um, civil organizations. Mm, it, this was uh, upper middle class neighborhood just in the middle of the city, in the green belt of the town of Wellington. Uh, so <clears throat> upper middle class white New Zealanders, uh, they have, have, have had <laughs> concerns how their <clears throat> um, culture will be affected by the migrants because they dress differently, they uh, speak different language, one lady was saying to me at a meeting, your women, uh, it's an uphill, how your women will carry the baby's <laughs> pusher <laughs> uphill, you dress, uh, loose dresses, it's really hard for you. And the other woman said to me, are you going to bring your exotic seeds to destroy our natural environment <laughs> wow i said to her look don't worry we have scientists in the group new zealanders and maris even maris they are the owner of this land before you I, you can't say like this as a, an ethnic person you i'm i i have very sharp tongue <laughs> most times very straightforward but I can learn how to be <laughs> We have scientists in the group. Don't worry. Yeah, if you have any concerns, and they, we can provide a report to you. Yeah. Thank you. Now uh, we can proceed to the break, and we can continue discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.